there's a flexible range of well-being in which we operate. We're responsible for at least those things we can change. Therefore, much of our happiness is in our own hands. Don't you mean much of our happiness is in our own minds? Yes. Now you know that your reality is not fixed. You can control your experience by using the precious but limited ability called self-regulation. And now, we will learn how to apply these two valuable keys that can aid you in creating positive habits. Aristotle said, We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not achieved with heroic acts. Excellence is a habit. And happiness does not result from single, even heroic leaps, but it's cultivated over a lifetime. A lifetime of repetitively forging good habits, building character, and adding to one's own and other people's well-being. Neurons that fire together, wire together. This means that our brains change structurally and functionally as a result of learning and behavior. When we scanned seasoned meditators' brains, we found that the left frontal area of the brain was larger, the area responsible for joy. Humans are not fixed in stone. Instead, we are what we repeatedly do. Our brains are malleable. We can even shape our brains after major trauma. For example, stroke victims can learn how to use their paralyzed body parts by recruiting different brain areas. Better still, we are malleable our whole lives. Function and structure change from birth till death. So if you want a healthy, sober brain, do what healthy people in recovery do. Repeated behaviors create pathways in the brain and body that then make those same behaviors easier to do. So how do we create good habits that become automatic? I mean, everyone knows that most New Year's resolutions are doomed to fail. It's also known that good habits are difficult to form but easy to break, while bad habits are easy to form and hard to break. But there is good news. We can break bad habits and we can form good ones, but it takes time and repetition. Think about eating, for example. This is something we all stink at as kids. Now, after years of doing it over and over, we are awesome eaters. We can even eat in the dark and we can eat while talking. If you've ever wondered why you would find yourself in the pantry when stressed or sad, it's due to this phenomenon. For example, if you've used food as a coping skill for a long time, then it becomes an automatic reflex. Your brain and your body don't need you to do anything. We make our habits and then our habits make us. Our brains know what we're going to do even before we do. And we're actually on autopilot at least half of the time. But fortunately, we can learn to be in control more often. The two ways we do this are by one, we match long-term rewards with short-term rewards, and two, change the path for elephant. What? Where did an elephant come from? I'll explain the first one, then I'll get to the elephant in the room. Long-term rewards, like healthy and longer life, they're valuable, but usually useless as motivators. They're so far in the distance that our foolish, self-deceptive brain thinks we can worry about them later. It's easy to imagine that we'll do the right thing tomorrow. You see, our future selves are always acting in the right ways. When we make New Year's resolutions, we're announcing that our tomorrow self will accomplish whatever is necessary. And when we're asked to do something that we may not particularly enjoy, such as volunteering at a soup kitchen or going to a particular relative's house for Thanksgiving, if we're asked way ahead of time, like six months or a year, we're more likely to say yes when it's so far in the distance that our today self isn't the one showing up. But when that day comes and your today self is wondering what in the seven blazes you could have been thinking when you agreed to go, now you know why. If our tomorrow self is entrusted with our health and well-being, well, let's just say we're not going to be very healthy or very happy. So how do I make my today self like my tomorrow self? Simple. You find a now reward that makes long-term goals more likely. For example, Choose the now reward of eating healthy so you're energized today, not so that you'll live long. Choose a now reward that you'll have more energy today because something like that is more motivating rather than living a long life, which isn't so motivating. It's too far in the distance. And apply this to exercise. Everyone knows exercise is good for your health and longevity. Let's just say that you want to exercise but hate to do it. Don't motivate yourself with, Exercise will improve my health and make me live longer, because most likely you won't get up from the couch. Instead, use a today reward. Use the fact that you can boost your mood for 12 hours if you do 20 minutes of exercise. 
The second way we learn to be in control even when we aren't is by changing the path for the elephant. The mind is divided in many ways, but the division that really matters is between the conscious and reason processes and the automatic subconscious ones. These two parts are like a rider on the back of an elephant. Rider is holding the reins and appears to be leading the elephant, but rider's control is weak and uncertain. Rider is much smaller than elephant. Elephant is primitive, instinctive, and has been around much longer than the rider. Elephant is the survival center of the brain where automatic habitual behaviors are stored. Nothing is as powerful in the brain as this network of brain structures. It has been evolving for hundreds of thousands of years. Whenever the six-ton elephant and rider disagree about which direction to go, rider will lose. Like a flea trying to wrestle a bear, we're totally outmatched. But rider is still pretty amazing. Rider can program autopilot by replacing old rewards with new rewards and nudging the elephant down new paths that are easy and familiar. Habits can form when rider motivates elephant to take a new path. Elephant learns that old cues signify other now rewarding payoffs and will take new paths as long as they don't seem overwhelming. Elephants only change slowly, over time, by traveling new routes, and not by forcing the rider's will onto the elephant's will. As riders, we fatigue much quicker than elephants. Rider's inability to control elephant by force explains why it's so dang hard to change habits. Our willpower wasn't designed to overcome elephant, nor does it do any good to educate elephant. The bottom line is, we aren't meant to overpower elephant and we aren't meant to educate elephant. We are meant to train elephant. Actually, the secret to self-improvement is learning how to train the elephant. And the best way to do that takes us right back to the beginning with mindfulness. Awareness enables rider to become attuned to the elephant, which is basically increasing awareness of the noise coming from our limbic system, our emotional system, which is also the survival center of the brain and coincidentally the main site of addiction in the brain too. Tuning into elephant in this way gives rider information about how to talk to elephant, which way the elephant is leaning and why. In addition, rider must become an elephant whisperer. Rider will never be in full control of the animal, but Rider can befriend the elephant, which in turn expands Rider's influence and empowers her to create good habits, develop her character, and forge her destiny. Remember, you form good habits, develop your character, and maintain long-lasting recovery by judiciously using your self-regulation to control your limited bandwidth of attention. Repeated behaviors create pathways in the brain that then make those same behaviors easier to do. Hardwiring repeated behaviors is helpful because this frees up energy to be used elsewhere and helps prevent you from becoming overwhelmed. So go out and make your brain one that thrives in recovery.